Yeah, good morning, Coach. Good morning. Happy New Year. Yeah, Happy New Year, you too, sir. Um, hey, how do you stop Josh Allen? Just get right <laughs> to the point here. Don't let him get off the bus. <laughs> <laughs> By the right. way, I know. <laughs> right. But a four-year guy, uh, you um, you know, you were up a little bit, but I'm sure you've seen his development. What makes him so dangerous as a dual threat quarterback? Well, he's a big guy. He's he's, he's just really talented. I mean, the guy can run. He's hard to bring down. He's big. He breaks tackles. Um, you know, he's got a strong arm. He can throw every ball. He can throw it 75 yards. I mean, he's just a just a extremely extremely talented talented young man. Thanks, coach. Yeah. Mike, Mike Rothstein. Hey, hey, Dean. How are you doing? Happy New Year. Hey, same to you. Thanks. Uh, I want to get. We we talked a bit about Richie Grant a couple of weeks ago, and I want to jump back into that a little bit. Of in a bigger kind of macro sense, where do you think the steps need to happen for him from year from this year to next year? In well, he's just of, gonna, uh, he's got to. Uh, he's got the system now. He knows it. In the off season, he's got to study it, watch a bunch of film on what happened this year, and just take it to a new level. He needs to spend time in the off season studying the film and all that kind of stuff. He's got the physical tools. It's more about just knowing the system, looking at it, and not just looking at him. Looking at the whole every down. Here's the call. What do we do? It's not just studying yourself. That doesn't really do you any good. You got to study. You know, when we did it right, when we did it wrong, who did it, it, it just, you got to study the system and get it down so that it's it's second nature to him. And, and where is Taquan Graham maybe improved or taken steps to where he's become more of a part of, it looks like the defensive line rotation, or is some of that just injury, or in this case, I guess, COVID situation for you guys? No, he's he's been the guy that we felt like Early on, he started developing. He was playing good, so we wanted to get him in the rotation. Uh, we didn't put him in there just to gain experience. We put him in there because he was playing good enough, and we had a bunch of guys that were probably pretty equal, so we just kind of rotated them all. He's got to do the same thing. All these rookies got to do the same thing. In the offseason, if they want to be and develop next year and, and take another step, they need to study the film. Like I say, and it's not just of them. It's of how you do it and when it's done right and when it was done wrong why it was wrong, and just really get the whole system down. So, I mean, for you, you feel in your defense, it's more of a, from year one, year two with these guys, it's much more of a, maybe a mental thing than than anything that you've seen from them physically one way or the other? Well, they had no idea coming into this season what we were going to run. They, they didn't have any idea what we were going to call stuff, what we were going to run. Well, now they do, you know, and so now they, it's got to become second nature to them. They got to know exactly this is what I'm. This is what is expected of me on this call. Sometimes you know they they knew it, but they didn't do it, and maybe they didn't do it because they'd seen something for the first time. But now when you got 17 games under your belt, there's no excuse for you. And in an, a whole season, in the off season, there's no excuse. If you're a pro, you're going to take that stuff and you're going to study it and you're going to become better. And, and the last thing I've got is Deion Jones when he was talking to us on Monday. You know, explain more of kind of what he's been really asked to do this year. What was it that you saw in him that maybe had him more of, as he put it, a guy on the edges versus being the guy in the middle? Well, the thing of it is the guy in the middle is is a guy that's going to take on a heck of a lot of blocks by linemen and fullbacks, if there is a fullback, but a lot more of the direct hits. You know, he's not a real big guy. He's a fast guy. He's a very athletic guy. Foyer's a bigger guy. You know, he's a, I think he's a fast athletic guy too. But I mean, Dion's game to me has always been when I watched him before and when I watched him in college and when I still watch him, he's a fast guy that's talented, that can cover a lot of ground, make tackles, do that kind of stuff. But it, he's, you know, at, at under 220 pounds, you don't want to be taking on 320 pound linemen all the time and big tight ends and all that stuff. You don't, you don't want to put a guy in that position. That's hard. So that's what we that's why we felt like he was going to play the position we wanted him to play. Appreciate it. Thank you, Dean. Yep. Josh. Hey, Dean, do you hey, have Josh. a do you come down one, one side or the other on whether whether an adverse weather game impacts the offense or defense more or helps one side more than the other? I really don't because, um, you know, everybody talks about, well, you know, a bad weather game will help the defense. Well, you, you know, you're backpedaling. 
<laughs> as a defensive yeah. back, not running forward, and then you got to plan at some point in time and change direction. Well, that's not fun on a bad field or a wet field or icy field or anything like that. That's hard to do. It's like easier to run forward. At the same time, I think it's just as hard on offense. They got to go out and run a route and make a cut. And I don't know if there's any advantage one way or the other. I don't think there's any. If that were the case, every team that's down south goes up north would never win. And every team down up north going down south in the heat would never win. Guys that play indoors would never win outside. Guys that are outside would never win inside. I don't think it has any bearing on it whatsoever. I think it's all how you prepare and you play that day. Does it ever get to the point that it affects the way you would call a game, or how sure. extreme would it? How yeah. extreme would it have to be? Absolutely. the The wind has more of a factor on it than it does the rain or the snow. Um, we played up in Buffalo one year when I was at New England. And it was like 40 mile an hour winds. And we basically, I played one coverage and really told the, the defensive backs <laughs> if they were playing on the right side to play inside the numbers and cover three. And if they were playing on the left side, play outside the numbers. Because the thing of it is, if it had a crosswind, you couldn't throw the ball outside. You couldn't get it there. I mean, you couldn't get yeah. it there. And so there's no sense in playing wide out there if the guy can't throw it out there. And then on the other side, the ball's going to carry when he throws it. It's going to really kind of probably carry higher and kind of, and farther. So you want to play outside. So, yeah, there certainly is factors, in, especially in, in the back end and coverage, especially on wind. Not, not necessarily ice or snow or rain. Um, but, you know, I, Hey, look at New England when they played uh, Buffalo a couple weeks ago. What they throw the ball two times in the first half, and about yeah. three or four times for the whole game. Well, they he yeah. definitely was not gonna he was not gonna let the quarterback throw it because the wind had a big factor. So I'm sure Buffalo, being smart, said, okay, we're not gonna sit there and play all these exotic coverages because we don't need them because there's no there's no sense in playing them because he's not gonna throw the ball. Thanks, Dave. Yeah, you're welcome. Scott? Hey, Coach. Um, yeah. You guys have used a lot of different people in that in that slot spot, and a lot of people of different sizes and skill sets. How has that impacted the way that you like to run the defense? Um, has that had any impact at all? Well, it's had a lot of impact. Um, you know, that's not generally what, what I really like to do. I mm -hmm. Generally, if you look at all the old film of Baltimore, of Tennessee, of New England, um, if Isaiah was here, he'd still be in the slot. I'd rather have one guy in there where I can do all this stuff than try to piecemeal. Certain guys can do certain things. Certain guys can do other things. It's not going to be hard for an offense to watch the film and say, okay, if this guy's in the game, here's what they're really trying to do. If this guy's in the game, here's what they're trying to do. You want, you need to have a guy. It's like the safeties, you know, and everybody says, well, you want this corner to do that and this corner to do No, you want both of them to do it equally well equally the same thing so that they can't pinpoint okay well if if 21's down in the he's always going to be down in the box safety and this guy's always going to be the high safety this corner is always going to go match up on the best receiver this guy's not you don't the perfect world for us is that you want a right and left safety you want a right and left corner and i want a nickel a nickel and that's what we want and so we haven't been able to do that because of whether it be injuries and just Certain guys have not been able to kind of do certain things that we need to do, so we've had to switch them out. But I, that's not what we prefer. I know that you're that that, that you're on to the uh, Bills, but if we could go back to the last game, that that the, the game stealing interception, like what did you see from that play, and what did you like about how he was able to uh, make that pick after that sudden change? Well, the biggest thing is first of all, it was great to get a sudden change and and come off the in that two minute deal and get the win. But the thing I liked most about it is the fact that the guys, they just did what the defense called for them to do. We were in man coverage, and yet Foyer's not. He's a, a guy that's a free guy, and he's the one guy that's playing zone. Everybody else is playing man, and he's to read the quarterback, and that's where he's supposed to go. And he did exactly what he's supposed to do. He dropped right where he's supposed to drop. He read the quarterback, and he picked it. It's just it's great to see a defense executed the way – you know, it's drawn up to execute. And so I was very proud of all of them. I thought they all did a great job on that. And the other thing is, is Dante Fowler, don't go unnoticed, had a little pressure in the quarterback's face. Um, you know, he had a good pressure rush on that, that that thing. So everybody did their job and it came out good. 
you guys are on a a, a, a bit of a streak in 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 terms of getting um, takeaways. Is there anything that you've seen where you guys have been better in that area? Do you think that you guys are better um, taking the well, ball? I think better, and we're just I think we're more comfortable doing the stuff that we're asked to do. Um, I just. It's still a long ways from where it needs to be. I mean, we don't have nearly enough takeaways. Not nearly enough. We don't have enough sacks. We don't have enough takeaways. We got to get better in that area in the future. And but at the same time, we have gotten better, especially on the takeaways. I think just because we're learning the coverages more and more and feeling more comfortable. That's the way it always is. I mean, you know, we were really good at Baltimore and takeaways for a couple of years that we had over 20 picks. Two year, two or three years in a row. But prior to that, we didn't. But the more you play the system, the more you feel good about the coverages and talking. You know, everybody still just got to realize it's the first year for all these guys in this system. And I think that they they're going to take a lot of that to heart in the offseason next year. And and we should be a lot better. If we're not, then it's my fault. Thank you. Yep. Chris Wren. Uh, was my hand up? I'm good. All right. Okay, Dila, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah, Coach. Um, just uh, uh, the running back, Singletary and Moss, what are some of the problems they present for you, too? Well, they're just good, hard runners. I, what I really see the problem is that they fit the system that they run, all this RPO stuff. You know, the quarterback is still the guy that drives this offense, whether he's running it or whether he's throwing it, but – it sets up the running game, and these guys do a great job in this running game of being able to run that RPO system. They just fit it. You know, I think they've done a great job, Sean, and, and uh, Dayball, they've done a great job of, of getting guys to fit the system that they want to run, and, hey, that's why they're having success. Thank you. All right. Michael? Yeah, hey, Dean, uh, this is a, a bit kind of off – general topic here, but you've coached in a few different Super Bowls. I'm curious, is there a different level of anxiety pregame or a different feeling pregame that you get as a coach, as a coordinator when you're when you're going to a Super Bowl versus other games? Yeah, but, uh, you know, there's, there's two there's two thoughts on that, really, is that the, the thing about it is, is that you kind of got two weeks there to prepare yourself for it. It's not like all of a sudden you're turning around and playing the next week. Uh, you really kind of have everything kind of down the week before you go so that when you go, you're not really putting anything in. You kind of got everything all set. You go, you have media day. That is kind of like, a, you know, you don't do a whole lot on that day other than the media. And then the next day, you know, you're back into it. But all the game plan is already set. So it's not like you're staying up late that week before the game, having to put stuff together and thinking of a bunch of ideas. You really kind of got them all done the week ahead. I will say this, though, the very first Super Bowl that I went to with, with New England, Bill Belichick did an incredible job of talking to the players because they had already just been to one the, even a year before and two years prior to that, of telling the guys in the pregame, don't go out and get all hyped up and spend all your energy in pregame because it's the Super Bowl. Guys go out there. They're all amped up and all of this stuff and they're all excited and they're going 110 miles an hour in pregame. Do your normal routine. He really emphasized that. And I always thought that was an advantage that his teams had because he kind of had them toned down. And then you see other teams out there just jumping around, going crazy. And, and, and yeah, they look good for about the first two series. And about the third series, half of them are hyperventilating because they, they spent all their energy in pregame at the start. He always did a good job of keeping everybody calm and stay in your routine. I, I just thought he did a great job at that. For you personally, was there any anything extra, anything added in terms of like that type of jitters or anxiety or anything like that? Well, the first one, I was a linebacker coach, so I wasn't a coordinator. So I think I had a little bit, it was a little easier on me because I wasn't calling the defenses or wasn't. You know, what, the only stress was I just want to make sure my linebackers played okay. I was pretty good with Vrabel and Willie McGinnis and Bruski. I, I felt pretty confident with those guys. But then the ones when you're the coordinator, yeah, it's a little different. I mean, hey, anybody tells you there's not a lot of stress on you in the Super Bowl, especially the one when we were 18-0. and 0. You know, you, you don't want to be 18-1, and 1, and we were, unfortunately. But, yeah, hey, it's you're – there's a lot of stress. You want to you want to finish the job. That's what you want to do. You go all that way. You make it that way. You know, you want to finish the job. So, sure, there, hey, hey, absolutely there's added pressure on you. 
How did you deal with that? You just got to deal with it. I mean, what are you going to do? I, you know, I can't, I can't call in a, a reliever. So it's just you, uh, you just do. You just kind of try to calm yourself down. You just got, you got to believe in the game plan you put together. That that's the key to me is that's the advantage of having two weeks is because you put the game plan together. Like you know, we practice today. Hey, hopefully this stuff that we practice today is going to work on Sunday. The good thing about the Super Bowl is I practiced it today, but the Super Bowl wouldn't be played for another week, so I get to practice it the same stuff another couple times to make sure it works. So, you know, you only get so many reps in a practice. When you go to the Super Bowl, you really get double the amount of reps. So you feel you just got to feel confident in what you're gonna, what you're gonna do, and what you're gonna call, and how you're gonna call it. And if you don't feel confident in it, then that's gonna that's that's not a good feeling. So, um, been fortunate that way. Appreciate it, team. Happy New Year again, man. Yeah, same to you guys. Happy New Year. Josh, Scott, do you have any follow-ups? I'm good. Thank you, Dane. Happy New Year. Okay, thank you, guys. Appreciate it.